coronavirus 19, or known as Wuhan coronavirus. We all know viruses can be either endemic, epidemic, or pandemic. Endemic is when it's dotted around the whole globe, but in small areas in different countries, epidemic being localized to one area of the country, and pandemic is when the whole widespread of the virus towards different parts. So as you can see, self-explanatory on the screen. Coronaviruses are a large family of viruses. The three main ones that we know for are MERS cough found in 2012, SARS-CoV in 2002, and the latest one, which was previously named SARS-CoV-2, now known as novel coronavirus or COVID-19 in 2019. MERS cough was originated in the Middle East, hence why it's named MERS, Middle Eastern Respiratory Syndrome. It was a virus that was transmitted from camels to humans and then because of respiratory droplet transmission from humans to humans. It was reported around 2,500 cases with 858 deaths leading to a fatality rate of 37%. SARS-CoV on the other hand was thought to believe found in 2002 which was directly from a cat family hives to humans and that was reported on 8,000 cases with 774 deaths leading to a fatality rate of 9.6%. Now the new novel coronavirus is thought to be believed to have started from bats, which then went on to a new animal known as the pangeleon. The pangeleon is a very rich and extinct and very rare animal found in the Eastern Asian countries as well as Africa and North Africa, but it's usually mainly used for purposes of making leather. Handling with this animal directly from the markets or from transporting around the world has probably led to transmission of the virus from this animal to the humans, and now it's been transmitted from human to human via respiratory droplet infections, so it's pronounced as a zoonotic infection. Current cases include 91,313 reported deaths of 3,117 cases leading to a fatality rate of 26%. So the rate of spreading is much more faster than both MERS and SARS because of there's 91,000 cases being reported all around the world. Now, Previous pandemic epidemic diseases such as chikungunya, cholera, Ebola viruses are something that you guys have heard of in the BBC or as well as in various other news, CNS or whatever, whichever part of the world you are. The three ones we've talked about today are MERS, novel coronavirus and SARS. So as you can see, the coronavirus 19, so COVID-19 has been dotted around the world, mainly originating from Asia and spreading over to the Europe and also in parts of America, mainly in California, as well as the New York. So everywhere, basically, where tourism is in flux. Europe is a high influx of tourism, as well as California and eastern, east coast and the west coast of um, northern America. Australia as well has seen some cases reportedly, and as well as India and Central Asia as well. Mainly the Middle Eastern countries such as Dubai, Iran, Iraq, these are places that have been also affected. Now, routes of transmission mainly include directly from person to person, and this is in between people who are in close contact with one another about six feet through respiratory droplets mainly. Now, globally, 88,000 have been announced from the World Health Organization, but currently, as of yesterday, the 5th of March 2020, 91,000 cases have been announced, with 2,915 deaths, and 64 countries outside of China have been affected with 128 deaths. Countries such as UK, America, as well as Italy, Scotland, China, South Korea, India, as well as Iraq, Iran, and the Central Middle Eastern countries have also been affected with the tolls up on screen now. Now, symptoms of COVID-19 usually include fever, shortness of breath and difficulty breathing, severe acute respiratory syndrome, and in more severe cases, such as when the disease usually prolongs and gets worsened, the patient can end up having pneumonia. That would then lead to kidney failure as well as even subsequent death fatality. The main cases or the symptoms usually prevent with fever, shortness of breath, breathing difficulties, and severe acute respiratory syndromes. Some patients don't even present any are asymptomatic as well, so they are the ones you need to look out for as well. COVID-19 symptoms, the ones I want you to remember is simply fever, cough, difficulty breathing, and severe illness. If you see a patient or if you see person who's complained about any of these, try to get them to go to their local medical center as soon as possible. Structural micro microbiological features of COVID-19. On screen you have an electron microscope of COVID-19. 
COVID-19 or coronavirus, the name itself is Latin Corona for crown, is around 100 nanometers in diameter, which is roughly very, very small, hence why we had to use an electron microscope to see it. And red blood cell is usually seven times bigger. The protein you can see in the middle here is known as a virion, contains the RNA virus, which is around 26,000 to 32,000 bases pair, base pairs long. In comparison to humans, humans have a 3.1 billion base pair long, so it's very, very minute. The outer part, or known as what's known as little, little spike-like projections, is known as protein spikes, and these are SNL types, which I will discuss further in this video. So, they have a spherical and pleomorphic envelope particle, usually contained of single-stranded RNA associated with nuclear protein within a capsid promised of matrix protein, and the envelope usually is bears club-shaped glycoprotein projections known as the protein spikes. The protein spikes have two different forms, usually an S-type, which is a milder and less infectious, and an L-type, which is considered more infectious and more virulent. The one a Chinese scientist as of the 5th of March had said most of the cases reported in China have to be found with the protein spikes being the L-type, hence why the cases in China are much more higher than anywhere else in the, in the world, especially in Wuhan. Now, can, a, can a coronavirus have both S and L-type? We're not sure as of yet, but it probably can be. So the vaccination companies around the world, as well as pharmaceutical companies, are trying to develop one vaccine which is um, active or effective against both the S and L-type. Now, the pathogenesis of COVID-19. As you know, the coronavirus or the COVID-19 virus has usually spikes of protein. The spikes of protein is what allows it to bind to receptors within your respiratory epithelium. Now, they usually bind to receptors known as ACE2 receptors found in your lungs. Once they bind to these ACE2 receptors, then they lead to, they enter the cell and then they start multiplying because they use the whole cell machinery system in order to multiply. Viruses are something that uses human body resources to multiply. They then go on to cause respiratory system syndromes such as heavy goblet cell production, mucus production in the gob from the goblet cells and ciliated cells, as well as inflammatory response of cytokine release and interleukin, which leads to inflammation and clogging up the respiratory system, hence why it makes it difficult for breathing. SARS-CoV-2, also known as COVID-19, or SARS-CoV, which was found in 2002, both have pretty much the same pleomorphic structures. They are known to completely affect the mucus cells as well as the goblet cells. Once they do, like I said, they cause they cause infiltration of immune cells, which leads to clogging up of the bronchial or the airways, as you can see in the screen now, where the laser is pointed to, which makes breathing more difficult. If the inflammatory response is even more greatly enhanced or greatly exaggerated, this can cause destruction of the pulmonary parenchyma, i.e. the structure of the lung. This will then lead to pneumonia, which is known as inflammation of the lung parenchyma or the lung tissue. Now, how are the ways to protect yourself from COVID-19? On screen, these are all images or posters made by the World Health Organization team. Usually avoid close contact when you're experiencing cough and fever and avoid spitting in public at all times. If you have a fever, try to stay inside and try to seek medical attention as soon as possible or wear a mask. Wash your hands is the number one and go-to thing to do right now in the outbreak of COVID-19. Wash your hands at all times after coughing or sneezing, when caring for a sick, before, during or preparing food, before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, after handling animals or animal waste. You can protect the others from getting sick by avoiding close contact when you yourself know that you're experiencing cough and fever, avoid spitting in public, and if you have fever, seek medical attention. To wash your hands for at least 20 seconds is what the World Health Organization suggests for everyone to do. Avoid touching your face or eyes, nose, mouth, these regions, and use tissues for coughs. Practice food safely. Try to eat a, a healthy based diet as well as meat products can be safely consumed if these items are cooked thoroughly. Try to not to eat sick animals or animals that have died of diseases should not be eaten in any circumstances. And always cook your eggs, meat, thoroughly as possible to avoid bacterial contamination as well as various other contaminations. Use different chopping boards and knives for meat and uncooked foods and raw foods and cooked foods and wash your hands between handling foods.
if you work in Asian countries or in China or in Southeast Asia or even in Europe in the market where you handle animals or stuff, always wash your hands after using or animal products. Avoid touching eyes, nose and mouth. Avoid contact with sick animals and spoiled meat. So try to stay away from traveling at this current pandemic. If you have a fever, seek medical attention because if you travel, it will really make the case worse because if you're traveling to a country where there's an increased outbreak of coronavirus, you're more likely to end up contracting the virus and bringing it back home to where you're from and giving it to your loved ones. Stay he healthy while traveling. When coughing and sneezing, always use tissues or um, flexed elbow or flex your elbow and sneeze into your elbow. If you choose to wear a face mask, be sure to cover your mouth and nose and avoid touching the mask once it's on. People like young, young people, individuals or toddlers, when they wear masks, they usually play around with the mask and touch the mask at all time. Discard the mask and use it only once. When to use a mask? You use a mask when you're taking care of a person who's suspected with 2019 COVID infection. You can wear a mask and you can also tell the patient who's suffering from the fever to wear a mask. Replace the mask once it's done, as soon as it becomes damp, and do not reuse single use of mask, which a lot of people tend to do. You can remove the mask and discard it safely into the bin and wash your hands with alcohol-based rub or soap and water as soon as you finish using the mask. There are some wrong facts and myths about COVID-19 out there in the world. Things include people believe that using cold water can kill the coronavirus. This is absolutely not true because the human body temperature always remains between 36.5 and 37 degrees. The virus usually uses the human cells because it loves the temperature that our body has and is a perfect cell, cellular machinery in order for it to replicate. Thus, people think that making your body more colder would cause your body temperature to decrease, which would kill the virus. This is absolutely wrong, but this would actually make you ill. Using UV lamps to sterilize your hands and stuff, this will not help with the coronavirus outbreak at all. Instead, you would end up having UV radiation and skin irritation leading to skin cancer. Can spraying alcohol or chlorine all over your body kill coronavirus? No, spraying chlorine and all over your body will not kill the virus that have already entered your substance. But this is a good way from keeping yourself or preventing from the virus getting into your body in the first place. People have this conceptualized idea that eating garlic can help prevent infections. Garlic is a very healthy food and it has very anti high antimicrobial properties, but however, there is no evidence as of yet that eating garlic can be used to prevent coronavirus. Does the coronavirus affect older or more older people or younger people? Every age group is equally affected. People have this conceptualized idea that coronavirus only affects older people because their immune system is weak. Yes, that is correct, but no, and a younger person can get affected too. People pre-existing with medical conditions such as asthma, diabetes and heart disease are more vulnerable, so they have to take... People who advise of always to take steps to protect themselves from the virus. And thermal scanners. Thermal scanners are good to detecting people with fever, but this does not mean directly or correlate that the person has coronavirus. So if you suspect that someone has a fever, please advise them or stay away from them and give them the reason why you're staying away from them and tell them the reason to meet a medical doctor. Other cases include no coronavirus cannot be transmitted through manufactured goods in China. People believe that anything that they buy from Amazon, such as face masks or toys, glasses, iPhone cases, whatever you have, because they come directly from China, they have been suspected to coronaviruses. This is not true because coronavirus can only live up to a few hours, up to several, and several hours on the surface of if, if so it was on the product that you bought, but highly unlikely 99% of the time it is not. So this is a wrong information out there. And preventing hot baths does not also prevent coronavirus. Last but not least, is antibiotics preventing coronavirus? The answer simply is no, because antibiotics are used for bacteria. Coronavirus is a viral infection. There is no drugs available for virus infection unless it's antiviral drugs. But 